Hello everyone, welcome to the Quarantine Kitchen. Today we're making Bloody Marys. Bloody Marys, a drink that says, yeah, I'm drinking at 10 a.m., but I put celery in it, and that's gotta count for something. First person I ever saw a drink of Bloody Mary was my Grandpa Bob. I says, hey there, Grandpa Bob, what are you drinking? He says, this is called Grandpa Forgot His Sleeping Pills. I says, okay. A Bloody Mary is like a thumbprint. You don't wanna leave them at a crime scene, okay? Wait, that's not how that analogy goes. A Bloody Mary is like a thumbprint. Each one is unique in its own way. So I'll show you how I make a Bloody Mary. And then here's the fun part. Once we got our Bloody Marys made, we're all gonna go on a house treasure hunt to find equipment for hospitals. What kind of stuff are we looking for? Well, my dad's a doctor at Children's Hospital, Wisconsin, and he's calling right now. He'll tell you. Hey, Dad, what do you need? Charlie, we need masks, N95 masks, gloves, hand sanitizers. The list is on chw.org. Okay, thanks, Charlie. Dad. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie? Yeah. Tell me you're not drinking a Bloody Mary right now. Uh, it's got celery in it. Okay, I gotta go. Okay, keep her moving. Hey, Charlie? Yeah. Get a haircut. Okay, thanks, Dad. Thought my hair looked nice. Okay, more on the equipment for hospitals later, but for now, let's get some booze going so we can all focus. Now, to make Bloody Mary, you'll need vodka, tomato juice, an ice fishing weight, a nail, hammer, and of course, your buck knife. And if you're missing any of those things, you'll be absolutely fine. First things first, grab your buck knife, cut a lemon. Squeeze that lemon into the bottom of the glass. Shoot, we got seeds in there. Um, hmm. Now at this point, you could stop and get a strainer, or you could say uh, a little roughage ain't gonna kill you. Let's keep her moving. Now the main thing my grandpa Bob taught me about Bloody Marys is you wanna have them spicy. Spicy enough to sweat out your sins. Got a little hot sauce going in there, okay? And then, yes, we are adding some horseradish, okay? Yeah, that looks about good. Yeah, we'll be sweating out some sins. Okay, dogs, then we're gonna grab some celery salt, and uh, come on, where is it? Put this barbecue, and oregano, cheese, Louise, come on. Now. Two paprikas, but no celery salt. Okay. Okay, forget it. All right, well, there's no celery salt, but we did find chili and garlic and salt, so, uh, why not? Some of you are saying, I already hate your Bloody Mary, and that's okay, you don't have to drink it. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, Charlie, come on, let's get to the happy sauce, okay? Enough fooling around. Now, I agree with your sentiment, but what I will tell you is if you start making a Bloody Mary and you don't put in your Worcestershire sauce or however the heck you say it, oh, shoot, okay, that was, mmm. This just turned into a public service announcement. If anyone removes the little plastic limiter on your Worcestershire sauce, you better tell them that they are playing with fire, okay? Now you might be sitting there thinking, we're starting over. Well, that's where you're wrong. You just gotta remember the more you mess up, uh, the more booze you add. Now what kind of vodka are we gonna use? Are we gonna throw the best stuff in here? I think not. I just put enough Worcestershire sauce to kill a horse. I don't think I'm gonna be tasting much vodka anyway. So you use your middle range vodka. Luxusel potato vodka. Or if you're throwing a big party for extended family and you don't want them to get too used to the situation, feed them Fleischmann's. Fleischmann's. The booze you use for family you don't like. I'm just gonna eyeball two shots here. And that's very important with Bloody Marys. You always eyeball it. And if your eyeballs aren't working well, you've had too much to drink. Now when it comes to tomato sauce, you just take whatever tomato sauce you got lying around. Right, looks like we got some V8. Oh, it's spicy hot. Even better. Check the expiration date. Last month. Questionable. Do we have any? Uh, no more. Hmm. Okay. Well, and you roll the dice. Now we are cooking with gas, but we are far from the finish line. Okay, so grab your hammer and get some ice. And before you ask, yes, I did sanitize the hammer. Now look, we're not gonna James Bond it here, okay? The shaken, not stirred, that's not how you do a Bloody Mary. Okay, what we're gonna do is tumble it. That way you mix up the spicy love potion with the tomato juice and the booze, okay? Now we're sitting pretty. Gonna add a little bit more ice to the mix. Now you wanna add a little extra ice because it's gonna be garnish support. When you're looking to garnish a Bloody Mary, the world is your oyster, okay? You put anything in your Bloody Mary, okay? I'm talking pickles to peppers to peckers to chickens. I've seen whole chickens. Wait, did I just say peckers? Folks, all garnishes start with the basics, okay? And that is celery. What you wanna do is go to the center of the celery and find a stalk with a lot of leaves on it. Look at that, very 70s, good to go. And folks, now it is time to go wild and crazy with your garnishes. Now, Bloody Mary is a great quarantine drink because it allows you to open up your fridge and your cupboards and say, and these pickled tomatoes, boom. Pickles, you bet your tush. And of course, no Bloody Mary's complete without some cheese, okay? So cut off a little bit of cheese there. And this cheese is from Silver Lewis Cheese in Monticello, Wisconsin, located right about there. Fish yourself out a green pickled cherry tomato. 
Thanks, Andy. And then go bobbin for a pickle. Now, some people are gonna tell you to use toothpicks on your garnishes, and those people have toothpicks at their house, okay? I still do not, but I did find this nail, okay? So put the nail through uh, the pickle, through the cheese, through the tomato. Now, if you just toss this garnish in your cup, it might go sinking after you drink a little bit. But here's how you combat that. Take your ice fishing weight, clamp it to one side of the garnish, and then boom, you're sitting pretty, okay? Mm. Yeah, I could use a little less Worcestershire sauce, I'll tell you that. Now, typically, I would toss a beef stick in here, but it is a Friday in Lent, and I don't want my mom to have to break her quarantine to come on over here and slap that beef stick out of my face. Folks, now that we got our Bloody Marys, it's time to go on the house treasure hunt. First of all, shout out to all the doctors, nurses, and medical professionals out there taking care of everybody in this crazy time. They need our supplies, okay? So if you got masks, if you got gloves, if you got shields, if you got scrubs, go around your house, find it, put it in a box, put it by the door, and then call your local hospital and they'll give you donation instructions. On mandwalkmint.com, I linked up the donation instructions for Children's Hospital. And if this bloody's making you feel real inspired, Children's even asking people to make masks. We got the blueprints for the mask linked up on mandwalkmint.com too. So we can help all them docs keep her moving. Okay, cheers to you. Watch out for deer and go Packers the bears okay there folks we got grandpa bob he's got a fish on the line this is a musky grandpa bob we got a big one. one oh my gosh grandpa bob how you doing there guy huh hard at that right this is a real oh my gosh oh, keep her moving